So we have a special guest this morning. Oh, wait. Well, uh, you you and you and Aaron, you guys move at about the same speed. So close enough. So um, my, my only my only player jersey. Only player jersey. Um, so you go to your you go to your local restaurant and you've never been there before, and you order the pancakes or you <laughs> order the waffles. And the biggest question is you don't know what kind of syrup they're going to have because it could be that watered down crap it could be that high fructose corn syrup crap it could be the real maple syrup it could be like that strawberry flavored garbage that they serve you at like a denny you you don't know what you're going to get and you just have to pour it on and hope that's this panther team in a nutshell right there you don't know what you're going to get but you just better just just swallow and just figure it out from there. Uh, I I call it the doc, the doc the the Doctor Jekyll and Hyde team. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Um, I know coming off that long roadie, you know, um, history dictates that we you know don't come out and play a good game and lose, especially to Detroit, who took it to Tampa the other night. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I was pleased last night. I really was, for a lot of reasons. It's Bob had a re- good. Bob had a good game. Yeah. Got to give him credit right off the bat. Right, right, right. Um, no, he he looked good right from the start, which was which was good to see because um, if if Knight has <laughs> anything close to what Barkov has or had, um, we're gonna need Bubba. Bubba going to get his job back if if Bubba, because he plays like that. You don't go back to Spencer, right? I mean, so well, let's it is, let's hope it's not the pneumonia. I mean, again, right. what I had and what another one of my friends now has as my like, sister, this right. upper respiratory thing, like South Florida. I don't understand how this right. thing has just been like a tidal wave of people getting sick from this thing. So if that's right, the right. case, it's about a week. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to see about that. But the other good news is, is, is the depth scoring. I mean, between the last game and this game, all of the call-ups have now scored a goal. Um, Tierney looked, Tierney looked good last night. I liked him when I, you know, I mentioned it in my season, season preview, preview <laughs> before the preview, when we were watching the, um, uh, preseason games i i liked him and i and i liked the what i saw of him on film uh because when i ended up watching film i think it was balsers and cousins um i believe those are the two guys he's had shared time with before but anyway i was watching the film of those guys the new guys and there was tyranny as well and i actually liked him um maybe a little bit better than some of the other guys yes so, you did Yes, you did. I wonder how Bowser's doing. Just do you like have any you know, idea? I'll have to look. I meant to look that I up mean, a couple of days ago. I was moot, thinking the it's same a moot thing. Point. We got rid of him, but I'd just be curious to see. Right, right. Um, Tierney okay. seems to be more of like the fourth line type of guy. He's he's been in the league a, a, a little while. He's he's not a young guy. Um, but if anybody, Dalpy, Dalpy, thirty-three. Right, right. Yeah. If anybody's going to take that spot from Hornquist for the rest of the season and let Hornquist rest, um, I feel good about Tierney and how he looks out there. Dalpes look good. Bob look good. Um, you know, and I'm I'm curious to see what they're doing with the lines because obviously with um, Lundell out, we didn't see the full picture quite yet. But to whose request they uh, coach. I can't. I I'm almost gonna say Coach Q. I'm like I'm like back in last year. Maurice kept that top line together per per Stu's request, and it and it worked, um, especially on that Kachuk goal. Holy, holy hell! Wait, we'll talk him. about that. He also has kept. He's also kept Montour and Forsling. Remember, he had he had Forsling with Ekblad for a little bit, and that and like right. nah. Go right. back to where it was. So I think, yeah. actually, I think Ekblad played with Kierstad last night. He played with Mahura last night. 
Right. Um, they're trying to find some chemistry between, you know, those two guys. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's just incredible how our defensemen are scoring goals from in front of the net. Yeah. Both, both Mahura's goal and Kirstead. What the hell was Kirstead doing? I was like, number three, when I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> And he popped that goal. And I'm like, what the fuck was he right. doing in front no, of the it was like, It was like Mahura was rushing the net like I thought it was Kachuk. No, you that know was, what I mean? Um, that was uh, Matheson. No, no, last night, Mahura. There wasn't no Matheson last night. I, I, oh, I know. I, I, get what, I get what you're saying. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that the announcers, because I saw, you know, a goal happened so fast, I didn't see who it was. And then the announcers were like, yeah, it was they they brought up Kachuk's name. So I thought it was Kachuk. And then they showed the replay and it was Mahura. But yeah, you're right. Doing, you know, I don't we don't bring up that name around here. Yeah, much, okay. So, you know, <laughs> we don't want to compare any of our of our players now to Mike Madison. <laughs> Trying to think of the of the uh was it Zach? So I I noticed it, unfortunately. The announcers didn't say anything about it, but that goal that Bob gave up, even though he gave up a juicy rebound, right. that goal was on Mahura. How not did that clear, happen? Not not clearing it out. Clear as day. And again, I didn't put it out there on Twitter. Somebody else did, which means obviously there's other people like myself that are very observant to the little idiosyncrasies of the game. The announcers were quick to jump on Montour for allowing the shot, but Bob made the save. Unfortunately, he couldn't hold on to it, but Mahura right. is right there. He is swatted away or to swat the Detroit players stick away, and he didn't do it. It was just, you know, it happened so fast. Right. Well, it, it did happen fast. Um, I had a little bit of a different take, so maybe I saw the replay a different way. And I'm not necessarily saying you were wrong, but my take at the time was that was Tierney's man. And he just let the, because you see at the last second, Tierney's like, oh, oh, and he tries to keep. keep yeah, back up right him. there. Watch, watch the replay again. Oh, I know Let's Mahura see. was right there, but. Um, Mahura, well, swat, no. he, he missed it. He didn't swat it away. All right, whatever. We gave up a goal. Right, we um, gave up a goal. So let's just, we can go back to other things, but let's just talk about the incredible freaking, that's, that's a shootout goal, by the way, Yeah, that Kachuk did. That's what yeah. Bukestead did in that 20-round shootout against Washington. Right. The tip the shoulder, the yep. goalie bites on it, and then you put it top corner where the goalie's gone down, and that's a per perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's the only way to describe it. It was it was a beautiful thing. It happened so fast. I mean, like, was it you or somebody had said, I didn't realize, somebody in the chat maybe, or maybe you, I don't know, you no, didn't realize. One of, the one, one of the announcers said something about, or Maurice said that, the one thing he didn't realize is what a pair of hands Kachuk has on him. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That that's yeah. the thing. Okay. So, oh, but um, no. I mean, he made it look easy, and he and he was so casual about it. It's not like right. you know we got a, uh, you know Kachuk fist pump and all that shit. I mean, it was just listen, that little six by six little yeah. freaking box, man. Right. These guys are so good. And thousands and thousands and thousands of shots that they take in practice to yeah. hit those top corners, and they do most of the time. And it's coming at the goalies fast. They just can't. They can't. But you can't. You can't, can't move your arm that fast. They can't get that thing up there to stop it. No, no, not from that. Not from that distance. In fact, they mentioned one of the stats they put out last night was that Kachuk leads the league in terms of. His average goal is only 6.6 .6 feet away from the net. And that's the closest in terms of throughout the league. His average goal is closer to the net than anybody else. So when a player is that close to the net, when you think, when you think about it, you know, you look six feet from you, you know, I mean, that ain't that far. And the dude is standing there and 
he just just he's gonna beat you. You're gonna get beat half the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I watched the replay of the Winnipeg game last night, and he did it to us, but he did it to whoever they were playing last night. Kyle O'Connor did the same thing. Came in pretty much the same way. It didn't didn't you know do the shoulder dip or deep the goalie. He just found that corner. Right. Right. You know? Right. Right. Guys that can do that, man, that's, in, you know, probably an extra 10, 15 goals a year. Yeah. No, I get it, so, man. And look, we needed those four. We need, well, I call it four points because it was a huge four point swing. And I mean, it didn't even put us in a playoff spot. So that tells you how bad we needed it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know. that's a, that, 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 listen, start of, start of a short homestand. It's, it's a morale booster. Um, the big morale booster was seeing Barkoff back out there and and engaged, right? You know, um, yeah. And, and for the faceoffs, the faceoffs alone, um, we 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 were a hell of a lot better last night. We we need if nothing else, you need Barkoff out there for the faceoffs. He almost had a shorthanded goal. Yeah, uh, but you know, um, he shot it kind of right into the into the goalie's belly. But look. Uh, I said this last night, and it's it's so much different this year because I mean we know that, but by this time last year, it was do you want the president's trophy or not? You know what I mean? That's where we were, and um, you know I remember vividly, very vividly, the year that um, with Bugner, where we went on some insane run and then then and this is this is to frank's point frank commented yesterday that it's too early in the season to say do or die no not when you could end up five seven points behind in the playoff race go back and look at that season where we got 96 points and still didn't get in look at how far behind we were we had some insane run it was like 25 and 5 or some crazy crazy run that we went on and because of a lost point here and a lost point there we still didn't get into the playoffs it's it's i want to say it's impossible but you get seven points behind around christmas you got to play 800 hockey to get back into the playoffs because these teams they maybe lose a game here lose a game there but they're still getting a point they get a point they get a point and it's just really, really difficult to catch up. It's it's just the way it is. And especially this year, I looked this morning, there's nine teams within, I believe, six points of each other fighting for six playoff spots. Yeah, it's the um it's the one-on-one matchups in the division that are yeah. the, the four point games per se that are gonna be yeah. the difference. Yeah. But called it the other day he said we got to get on a nine or ten ten game winning streak right 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 we just got to rack up you know 16 18 point 20 points like boom like right. that's the you know we have to we have to do yeah. that in order yeah. for us to really get back in the thick of things right right, right. winning three you know three out of five games isn't going to cut it right now I'm not going to say December, but January's always been a very critical month for us. And I'm look at this schedule. Historically speaking, we've killed our seasons in January. What? And if you could remember back, there was a game that I went to where we lost to Edmonton. Um, Ottawa beat us twice. We went to right. Toronto and lost. So that that was that that was the end of that season. Right, and I, I want to. Take you back on that point because you're saying exactly what I was going to say was usually that late game Western Canada trip is in January and that's what kills us. Now, our January this year, um, the road games at Detroit, at Dallas, at Colorado, at Vegas, at Buffalo, at Toronto, we got at Montreal, at the Rangers, at Pittsburgh. Um, and, and then we're into February. We've already had, I'm going to go through the rest of the schedule here. We've already 
done it in terms of our the West Coast, like the LA, Anaheim. We've done that. I'm, I'm, and we've I'm done looking. Now. I'm looking. And, and we we've are done the, the Western. We're done. So, you know, the, we're done. Yeah. We're done. The, the furthest we play is that like like at Vegas. We have that one little bit out there. Yeah, um, which is in, which is surprising that that's never in the San Jose, Anaheim, LA. It should be Vegas should be in that. Right, right, country. right. Yeah. But those are three games that are real critical. Dallas is really good. Vegas is crazy. And of course, Colorado's the cup champ so those three games oh i'm not saying they're easy but that, your no, point that, about that's, Jay- that's a that's a big six points there so yeah 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 um, no no doubt well look colorado's got a lot of injuries right now they're they're hurting right now a lot of teams a lot of teams yeah yeah they yeah, yeah washington yep yeah so, um and that's the thing is that you know in the east this 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 is going to come down to Every every point that you can gain, you know, you you if 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 you're down three to one, three to two in a game, and you can get that sucker to overtime and, and get that point, though that's gonna be the difference between making the playoffs and not. And that's what the difference was. You know, I mean it was 96 points, guys. We didn't get in the playoffs, we missed. And yeah, and there was some years back where we we tied with Montreal and yeah. Same point. Yeah. We didn't get in because we lost the, you know, the matchup tiebreaker. Right. Or right. Oh, no, it was regulation win. It was regulation win. Yeah, yeah, it was it was regulation win. That's correct. That right. sucks. I know. So, right. I mean, listen, they 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 know what they gotta do. They they got they again, besides the Calgary game and the Winnipeg game, and obviously the uh the brain fart with 4.4, 4, we, we would have had a decent road trip. Right, right. But, but look, three of the last four games, we've won five to one. And yeah, this was, this was, this was, this was more than two points last night. This, oh, yeah. You know, well, get, getting, into getting Bob back, right. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. You know, and it just, it just goes to show you, man, you know, we beat Boston. Who was like right. wiping the flow with everybody? Okay. And then we beat Detroit, who beat Tampa. Just beat Tampa. All right. And now in between that, we got killed by Calgary and Winnipeg. Well, listen, Winnipeg is one of the strongest teams this year. I think they're going, I think they're going deep in the West. Yeah. 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 Hellebuck's playing out of his mind. They, they don't, don't, you know, again, Kyle O'Connor, Shifley, Wheeler, Morrissey, um, Dubois. Those guys are, they're, they're yeah. really kicking it right now. They won again. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. beat St. Louis last night. Jeez. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah. look, it's going to be that kind of year, guys. Like I said last night, strap in. Um, now, in terms of the, the injuries and, and, and everything else, um, from what I've seen from Tyranny, Patrick Hornquist does not need to see the ice the rest of the regular season. And if Tyranny plays this well and we make the playoffs, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Oh. On the ice, I like how tyrannies look. There, there would be no reason to go back to Hornquist unless somebody else was hurt or unless you're going to take somebody else out. Um, stall, both stalls look, look, they look fine. Look, I mean, I'm we you know, you, since I, and I tell that, you, since that Horn- video where I went off on Mark Stall and just right. ranted, ranted on him. He's turned it around. I can't say a bad thing about him. Listen, no. every every defenseman, okay, is going to have a fuck up. Right, right, Just right. Just the nature of the game, poor decision with the puck, whatever, yeah. you know, missed, missed uh, coverage, whatever. But Stahl has been solid, man. Yeah. And Eric Stahl. I know. 
You know, he's not look, lighting the lamp, but he's yeah playing good. Look, and, uh, us Panther fans, we're a little bit, we're a little bit um critical. It's PTSD. No, it's PTSD because Oland, okay, Yandel. You know what I mean? And, and so we're a little bit like, oh, you mean like another old veteran guy that, uh, you know what I mean? You, you get you get a little bit jaded, right? And, you know, we're, we're going, wait, Eric Stahl, what? The dude wasn't even in the league last year. So the question is, he looks decent out there. How the hell could he not make a team last year? What, what was that about? Unless for a year off, rested his body and, you know, this is this is my 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 theory of a veteran that's pouring all the gas they have left into one last season. But then you go back to Bob. Um, if 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 he's still physically capable of playing like last night, what in freaking Banana Republic creation was going on before last night? Because there were shots last night that all of a sudden now he's got the angle. And he's moving just fine. And 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 I mean, there was a couple of specific shots, like like the dude tried to get him short side. I forget who it was, but he'd been giving up those goals left and right, not covering that short side angle. And all of a sudden, he's doing it now. And it's 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 amazing to me how somebody with his pedigree, a veteran goalie like that, can get off their game to the point where they're just off the angle all over the place. This makes you wonder. What what is it physical? Is it mental? What yeah, yeah, yeah. Goalies, goalies, it's almost always this. Right. Right. It's like a go- it's like a golfer. Yeah. The golfers or a are machine. Yeah. The go- golfers, as far as their swing, it's a, like a freaking robot. Right. They don't they don't really change things up. Only us, right. you know, amateurs wanna like crank yeah. the ball, you know, right. over hit it, and then it slices in the woods. The golfers just, they just do this, the same thing. Right. Same thing with the goalie. Got to be up here. Yeah. But, um. Well, we needed him last anyway, night. Anyway, I showed mean, up. he obviously knows that we're dependent on him right now. And right. The, the big test for me, I mean, <laughs> there was a test last night, but I mean, the big right. test for me is Tampa. Always Tampa. Right. Always, and then, always Tampa. Um, then Sunday. That's the biggest question because if Spencer Knight's not better, and if he was too sick to even be the backup last night on Thursday, odds are Sunday he's not going to be ready to play. Um, he's not going to be ready to play if he's got. Which means, which means we might thing. see this kid lion against yeah. the Kraken. So, um, all right, listen. It is. Was, I it was is. hoping. I was hoping they'd put Gusta. I wanted to just if if we were if we were going to have an AHL guy, the dude is like six five, man. I wanted to see him out there on the ice. You know, if you're going to throw an AHL guy out there, yeah. Well, the guy ain't six five when he's laying on his back, and then you know if he missed a a, a shot, <laughs> so we'll see. And then you know, I when I I watched the game on Hulu. And saw that there's an upcoming game on December 13th, uh-huh. Columbus, Columbus, and the Panthers. Okay, so that's an, yeah, that, on, that makes it on Hulu. Yeah. Okay. So that's right. uh, that's another game coming up. So yeah, it makes it rough on Kyle. Anyway, right? I want to go back to Kachuk because they said that, and now that that's another. You know, he's making multi-point games easy, like Huberto. Yeah. How many Huberto had last year? Right. The took his fifth in scoring. Wow. Wow. He's up there with yeah, with the, the McDavid's. Big yeah, production wise. Um he's he's fifth in where's Huberto? I don't know. You know, you're fixing to tell me. No, or I don't follow look him. it up. All right. Well, I I thought you were fixing to make a point. Now I got to do. No, no, my oh, my point. Well, I, the point NHL is, I don't even have. Leaders. I don't even have to look at Huberto's numbers because I know he doesn't have anywhere near what Kachuk is doing. Let's see. Okay, Kachuk is sixth here with thirty-seven points. So you got McDavid, Drysaitel, Robertson, Tage, Thompson, Kucherov, Kachuk, 
Pasternak, Crosby, Carlson, and Peterson. That's the top All 10. All right, some, some, some decent names, huh? Um, I'm going uh, – I don't want to see the ad. I want to see where Jonathan Huberto's name is. There's Brady Kachuk at 24. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if Huberto even um, has 20 points. There's Ovechkin at 27. Um, I'm looking. Uh, I, he's not in the top 50. Yeah, he's not in. He's not in the top think, 50. I don't even think he's got 20 points. Come on. All right, let's go to page two. I mean, we're here already. Um, uh, because the, anou- the, anou- the anou- there's Carter Verhage with 24 points at 66. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. So, I mean, the, you know, the announcers were talking about his impact on the team. And, and now I um, now I'm on a mission, man. You've got me on a mission. Just keep talking. So just, I just I Google let this go. Jonathan Huberto was. There's there's Trocheck at 128 with 18 points. I had to miss it. Come on, he can't have that. I had to have gone past him. Jonathan Huberto, 2022. He's got 16 points, bro. He's at 159. He's got four goals and 12 assists. I told you he doesn't even have 20 points. Wow. Four goals. Four goals. Wow. 12 assists. Wow. Yeah. Okay. 2022, 2023 stats. Okay. Wow. Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah. 13 goals. 24 assists. He's probably outscoring. Plus, I didn't plus nine. I like the 24 assists. Yeah. Yeah. He he's probably outscoring Huberto and Weger combined. And 25 goals. I I, I yeah. think we got our money's worth. No, we're good. We're good. We just okay. have to listen. It's it, it you know the chemistry got a little you know some some chemicals got spilled in the wrong beaker and stuff. And yeah. I guess maybe yeah. we got to pour some out here and pour something in there to find. Well, the right chemistry. And this is gonna this is gonna in Maurice's defense. Every time we've started to look like it might be coming together, one of the big guys goes out. Right? Ekblad, Barkoff. Now we got Lundell out now and 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 Hornquist is gone. Gudis is gone. You know, I mean, those are guys that Going into the season, you're like, yeah, that we can't lose him. We can't lose him. Oh, geez, we can't lose him. And we've been losing all those guys for stretches. So, you know, the the craziness in terms, I mean, like the lines last night, I'm watching the games and I'm like, I know what the top line is. But I mean, like it was Barkoff with Luster Reinen and, and Reinhardt. And Reinhardt. I'm like, you're not going to, your brain, yeah. it takes a while so, for that to register. You know what I mean? Right. So that that's Lundell's line. Right. So here, here's the here's the here's the the thing, because I said Bennett, Verhage, and Kachuk are really bl- bl- they're blending really well with each other, and I know it's always been Verhage and Barkov, but now nah, you got to go right now with what's what's working. Right. And then you got Lundell, Lusterain, and Reinhardt. That's another line. The problem is right now. You got your number one center with right. no wingers. I know. Now, Duclair comes back, God willing. He yeah. comes back healthy. He comes back ready to go, looking good, blah, blah, blah. He's on Barkos right wing. Right. Now we got now we got to find a, a new left winger for Barkov. Because I don't break up that Bennett line. No, I know. And, uh, no. you know, you could obviously say, okay, well, We'll just take those wingers off Bennett's line and put them on Barkov's line for Hagee and Kachuk like it was. But to me, right. right now, the way I'm seeing things, I like what I'm seeing with that line. Yeah, my only concern so, with that being the top line is the face-offs. Yeah, well, that poor Barkov right now, but... Yeah. Because right now, well, I don't see anybody stepping up to, the you know... Yeah, Reinhardt and um, and Luster Rainen was a temporary fix, but those right. are those are Lundell's wingers. Right, um, right, right. White's not going to. I mean, Cousins, White, Lombard. I mean, think about the guys that we have that we could put up with Barkov. 
Well, Bar- uh, White's a right winger, though. So, right, Barco, I mean, White is right handed. He's a righty. I, so, I just don't, I just don't, I don't know who Maurice is thinking about slotting in with him. So, that's going to be a big question mark for me. Is, right. Uh, and, you know, and look, know, there may be again, how long Lundell's going to be out, but if Hornquist stays out, um, and we don't, and we and we send our depth down back to the AHL, and Hornquist stays out, Luclair comes back. There's room to get a winger. The trade deadline, not anything spectacular, but maybe if you traded somebody, you know, um, if if you if you needed that one more left winger, I think. You know, he keeps putting Cousins out there. I think he's a little bit disappointed. And I'm kind of disappointed. He hasn't, Cousins hasn't played bad, but I thought he'd bring a, a couple more goals. You know what I mean? Um, we know Lombard can score in spurts, but he's, every time he seems, he gets the chance to go up to the top six, it doesn't work out yeah. all that well. So, he's dis- I mean, he's, we- dis- he's disappointed me, Lombard, in the last half a dozen games. But, He's really, you know, realistically, he's a, he's a fourth liner. And, and for all of us, again, it's like the Hornquist situation where you think, right. you know, emotionally instead of logically. Like yeah. for so long, I've been harping on this thing, how important Hornquist is to the locker room and the leadership and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's on the ice and production. So I've totally done a 180 and say, you know what? Time to move on from Hornquist. And right. You know, the best thing for us right now is to let him take a long time to recover from that concussion. Right. And you know and I mean? with there's no, no with, reason for him to play. With Tyranny playing well, if you know you're going to get Hornquist back for the playoffs and you're short a left winger, um, you could always package together Colin White, right? Because you've got a plethora of right wingers. So I don't know. Listen, we'll have, yeah. we know Zito. He plucked Mahara off waivers. Right, and that's a good point. There's, there's a left winger out there that we don't know, we, we don't heard about, we don't know right. that that's Zito's point. got his eye on. Trust that's me. That's a good point. Zito's thinking what we're thinking right now. And right. they're doing what we're doing right now. They're trying to come up with, yeah, it makes sense to leave Bennett for Hagee and Kachuk alone. And it makes sense to put Luce Duran and, and Reinhardt back with Lundell when Lundell comes right. back because Lundell and Reinhardt are really good together. So they're thinking, what are we doing about Barkov? And right. it's got to be what they're thinking. We're thinking yeah, it. Yeah, and, you know, he declares six weeks, eight weeks, however long from coming back. It's funny because I cracked the joke couple of videos back and I said, well, you know, what do we do with that line when you brought up keeping the first line together? I'm like, I don't know, make Mark off 3C. And I'm not saying he's 3C, but winger wise, he's going to end up 3C. If if you keep the other guys with everybody else, he's I mean, going to end like, up, like it, you it, said. Get... It's like Ekblad. Right. Even though, even though Forsling and Montour, to me, are the first pair. Yeah. They're still giving Ekblad first pair of minutes with whoever's right. playing with them. Right. And we're not, don't worry, we're not suggesting Barkov should get third line minutes, um, but just by, by wingers, you know, what do you judge it by center or do you judge it by the wingers? You know what I mean? Like if it was Barkov with, with Lundell and, and Tierney, is that the fourth line or is that the first line? You see what I'm saying? So um, it's the minutes it's, it, because to me, right, right, right. You know, when when we had the um, last year, we to me it was one A and you know one A and one B. Yeah, one B, right? It yeah. really wasn't the first line, you know, Barco's line and Bennett's line. But um, I wanted to add one more point. What was that, Stu? Um, Let's see if he can get back there. Doesn't uh, look like it. No, nope, that's it. We didn't get back there. Well, look, I'll. Here's the thing: it's been a mass unit from the beginning, 
and it's going to continue to be, I think, I think you hit on a point there though now with, in terms of Hornquist is probably going to be done for the season. I can't imagine he's not going to be done for the season considering our cap situation. And you're right. There, there is room there um, to get a waiver pickup in case that's what Zito wants to do. You know, you don't get a lot of guys being dumped that time of the year, or, you know, it, it could just basically be like a gift, a, a, a gimme type of trade where somebody just has somebody like a Carter or Hagee sitting on their roster that they're not using. You know what I mean? And they're like, God, give us a third round draft pick, fourth round, whatever for the kid. And Zito pulls it out of his hat. Cause like every year he's done it on, I mean, he's half the defense is, or at least a third, right? Between Forsling and Mahura is dudes he just picked up off the street, <laughs> basically. Two, two home runs. Forsling's a grand slam. Yeah. 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 So it, I, it, it's it, just, it's just every time I watch him, I, I smile because he does something that's so. It's just not, it's not outstanding. It doesn't stand out as like a spectacular play. He has a lot of plays that are just like, that's the smart play. That's the play you're exactly. supposed to make. Exactly. And he does it on a consistent basis. Right. You know, right, he'll, right. He'll take, I think he took a penalty last night. I mean, occasionally he'll take, and I don't even think that was a penalty, um, but he's just, he's the leader of our defense. No disrespect yeah. to Ekblad. Um but yeah, no. I think I think Zito's he's a chess player. He's he's right. thinking a few moves ahead. So I, right. I have a feeling, you know, he's targeted a couple of people. And like you said, Rahegi was basically a, a spare part that, you know, yeah. Tampa I mean right. it happened with March Assault. Same thing. Exactly. It's just a question of when you can spot talent. Yeah that other people can't spot. Right. You're going to make a good move and you're going to get a good player. This Mahura, man, I never heard yeah. of him. Right. No, he was, he I was, never heard of him. I want to call him a nobody, but and this was, kid has played every game since he's been traded. Yeah. Or since we picked him up and he's right. played solid every game, pretty much every game. Right. I mean, right. He, and again, we were all, you know, in my opinion, he cost us the goal last night, but, he also scored a goal, so they kind of wiped yeah. each other out. Right. I wish right, I could right. remember what I was going to say, but that happens. <laughs> oh, Old well. age. You'll, you'll remember after. after. As, soon as, as soon as I hit stop recording, you'll be like, geez. Yeah, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up at the beginning of the next video. Yeah, yeah. All right, and guys. How are we doing um, on subscribers? We're, well, we've we've managed to get past the 5,950 mark to be at somewhere at like 5,960. It's it's there's there's there are alien beings. We're living in a simulation, and they've 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 set six thousand subscribers as the a number that is impossible for Jaws to reach. It is we've been flipping back and forth between those two numbers at least two to three months now. Yeah. All right. So listen, people, <laughs> if you've been watching these videos, Eric's Jaws recaps and live streams and you're not subscribed to this channel flying fluffy hockey the number one panther fan podcast in the world do it now i mean it takes a do quick a second and just hit subscribe let's get to the six thousand mark already and then shoot for ten thousand yeah but, um, yeah we're, we're you know, like for, the videos we're for ten comments man what do you guys think you know what's what what put some fantasy hockey wine combo with barkoff and yeah. And, let and, us know. Let me know if you agree with me that we should keep the Bennett for Hagee and Kachuk line together. And, yeah, that's um, yeah. And then obviously, what you're thinking is as far as you know, what happens when Duclair comes back? And I don't think right. Duclair's coming back for another couple of months, guys. He hasn't even started skating yet. Yeah, man, I, so. I don't. I don't see him coming back till the end of February. Yeah, that's about when Hugo came back. Was like least. mid was mid to late February. That's when Huberto came back yeah. and, you know, so yeah, man, it's, 
it's it's truly every night. Okay, who's playing with who? Where? Who's who's sick? Who's hurt? I mean, it's it's every night, man. You know, we we got used to it last year. Last year, you just you didn't even look at the pregame. You didn't even look because it was like, well, we got our guys. We're great. Didn't matter. We're winning. But this this it, this year's it doesn't matter. What matters is that the boys bring the effort right. every night for 60 minutes. These right. are all NHL players. Right. Okay. Right, right. We don't have a roster of superstars as, as other teams do not. Yeah. I mean, right. obviously there are teams that do have superstars. I mean, you know, Edmonton. Okay. They got the number one superstar and listen, they're not right. tearing it up. Right. So the bottom line is, is they if they're Jekyll and Hyde. They mean Bob has really got to suck it up in this next five six game stretch because Knight's yeah. going to be out at least a week. Right. Right. He's not going to no, have man. if he's sick with this thing. Hmm. They got to get him well. You right. I mean, he can't yeah. come back early like they did try with Barkoff and whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. Yep. All right, we appreciate all the support, and I just want to re- reiterate: I am not calling Bark off the three C. <laughs> okay, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if you leave the other two alone, if you leave the other lines intact, winger wise, he's three C. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know, man. It's crazier, crazier. All right, appreciate all the support, and. uh I'll be back later this afternoon. I'm doing a collaboration with Nick. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit of NHL hockey. Then um, tomorrow, live stream, Saturday, good to go. Uh, Sunday, Dolphins, Panthers at the same time. We're streaming both at the same time. So, yeah, don't miss that.